Hi, welcome, welcome back. My name is Carson and this is my space where I chat about knitting. I might have a long podcast for you today. Who knows how rambly I'll be, but I definitely have a lot of fun projects, a lot of um, finished objects and some whips, some surprises. So yeah, settle in, grab a drink and let's just get rolling. So I'm back after a little hiatus. I don't know, it doesn't really feel like a hiatus, but it has been two or three weeks maybe. We've had, as you might know, if you've been following, we've had crazy, crazy few months. And now I'm like, okay, our travel time is done. We are home for quite a while. But at the same time I realized, I was like, oh, we could literally have a baby at any time. So. <laughs> I don't know when the last podcast will be until I like take a bit of time off because we will have a new baby very soon But yeah, your girl is 36 weeks um, And I mean, it happen So in my mind, I was like, I'll have all this time to like, you know, make fun videos and podcasts after our traveling stops but Now that it's stopped, we're kind of just waiting on a baby. So we'll see but I'll keep making stuff until he comes and we're just gonna have fun. <laughs> I need to distract myself until he's here because I can already feel myself getting impatient. But that's okay. So, yeah, I have a whole notebook filled with three pages of notes because I just have a lot to talk about today. But I guess let's just start on our, or on my uh, finished objects. So, first off, I have finished this bad boy. So this is the Beanie by ZZ Textiles. It's free pattern. It was super easy and honestly really fun. And I have already worn this baby so much. I finished it a week or two ago maybe and I brought it in with me. We went to a wedding last weekend, my uncle's wedding, and the temps officially dropped here in Texas, which was so exciting. It's been pretty dang cold. And we've been going on walks me and Logan have been going on walks like during lunch. So I'm wearing this guy on walks. I wore it to the wedding. Let me put it on. And it is, I mean, I love it. It's like the perfect, just plain basic beanie. And I've, I've made a lot of beanies. <laughs> I made a lot of beanies whenever I first started knitting, but um, they were always like chunky or ribbed. I made a cabled one last year. I don't even know where that one went. I think I gifted it or gave it away. So I've made some chunkier beanies, but this one is in DK weight. I held together one strand of Cascade Heritage and then one strand of this Pretty Mohair by Savannah Rose Handmade in her colorway Haunted Bones. And just a little heads up, I'm pretty sure she's releasing similar colors. Not the same, I don't think, but similar colors to this. Possibly today. Today's Friday in my current state. I'm not... I'm hoping to put this out this weekend, but maybe she'll still have some skeins in her shop. So yeah, so pretty. So not she's not releasing the same colorway, I don't think, but it's similar, like similar vibes. So yeah, that's exciting. And I mean, I made zero modifications. Like I said, this guy's free. There's only one size, but it probably would be, it wouldn't be too hard to, um, if you like gauge swatched and then figure out like your perfect size. I don't think it'd be too hard because you're literally just knitting in the round. Um, there's no provisional cast on, you just knit into stitches in your cast on stitches, which was actually really fun. <laughs> I've done that before on the Friday, oh, I can never say this one, the Friday Sweater Baby by Petite Knit. It's the same situation, it's a folded neckband, but the way you do it, you just knit in, You it tells you how to like pick up the stitches and you knit in to the cast on. So I did that with this one and it took me a while. That was like the one step that took me a bit, but it was like fun to do. <laughs> and it was a break from stocking it. But honestly, I had so much fun just knitting on this guy. I mean, it was like rounds and rounds and rounds and rounds of stocking it until you reach the end. And it was really fun. And I think it was a combination of the yarn and I think it was on US 4 needles, could be wrong, but for some reason that needle size just felt really good in my hands. Like I've been knitting a lot with 
little tiny needles and sock needles and then I've also been knitting with like larger needles you'll see and so I think this was like the perfect in between needle size and it just it felt like the perfect I don't know like the perfect rhythm the perfect size I can't explain it to y'all maybe y'all have a favorite needle size too but that one might be my new favorite it was just really fun really seamless usually whenever I knit I'm like super tense <laughs> one time Logan was like what are you doing and I'm like I'm relaxing I'm knitting and he goes look at your feet and my feet were totally flexed as I was knitting so I'm definitely not someone who totally relaxes whenever they knit but for some reason this like the needle size the yarn the process it was just very relaxing and I was I was just chill knitting so yeah like I said the beanie by ZZ textiles it's a free pattern it's on Ravelry I will link everything down below and I love this guy I've worn it so much and it's so warm and it's not itchy I think that's what I love the most like I never really used high quality mohair before and this is this is high quality mohair and so I was kind of on the fence because the other mohair I've used is Diablo. Javi Diablo? I don't know. Something like that. Or Hobie. I don't know how to pronounce that word. But it's, I'm pretty sure it has acrylic in it and it was just really, really, really itchy. But this, I mean, if you need a sweater in this mohair, wow, that would be luxurious. So yeah, very luxurious beanie. Maybe I'll just keep it on. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I look weird, but I like it. Now I'm gonna have hat hair, but that's okay. Let me fluff. Fluff my um, low pone, <laughs> low ponytail. Alrighty, so yeah, that was the first finished project and I was super excited about that one. It's so practical right now. I mean, it's pretty, it's practical. I've been wearing it, it just makes me very happy. So yeah. Oh, and I have, I guess I showed you, but I have this much left of the mohair. So I wonder if I could, I need to weigh it and see, but I'm thinking I could even make some like shorty socks some luxurious shorty socks with this mohair and have them be like house slippers or something. I don't know. We'll see. But so yes, that was the very first finished object. Second finished object. I didn't even show these in my last podcast because I guess I hadn't worked on them in a while. So I just kind of ignored them. <laughs> they weren't a whip, which is fine because I didn't have any progress to show you. But I did pick them back up and I finished the last sock. So these are my September wood socks by This Handmade Life. They are finished, they are blocked, they fit beautifully. I have not worn them besides trying them on yet because I wanted to show y'all, obviously, because I finished them and I blocked them and I didn't want to get them dirty before. But, so yeah, I love these guys. I love them so much. The leg is one of my favorite parts. <laughs> I know I just showed you this, but it's this really pretty lease, leaf, gosh, I did this last time, leaf lace motif. And it's pretty dang easy to pick up on and memorize, at least it was for me, so I didn't have to like constantly look at the chart, which is nice. It was just more like a fun flowy knit, <laughs> if that makes any sense. It was easy to just roll through. And yeah, I did make a modification to the instep ribbing. I just chose a different ribbing pattern than what it called for, um, but Pretty sure that was all the modifications. I cast it on the smallest size. Oh, and I did actually. I remember now. I knit her summer flower socks in the recommended needle size. Given I don't swatch for socks. I don't know if y'all do. I don't because they're so small. Okay, I had to stop because my sweet neighbor pulled up again and he his driveway's right in front of my window and it's just really awkward. He's really nice, but it, it's just very awkward. So I don't remember what I was saying. But these are my September wood socks. I knit them in Tinderfoot. Oh, yes, I do remember. So I knit her, I knit Olivia's uh, summer flower socks in the recommended needle size, which I think is a US 1. And they were just like a little too tight on my feet. I still I wear them. Actually, have I worn them? Uh, they're more summer socks, so I haven't worn them yet since it's gotten cold. But, um, so they were just a little too small, so I was like, you know what, the next time I have a lacy pattern, like a lacy sock pattern, I will go up a needle size. So I used US 1.5 needles for this one, and they fit perfectly. So I think that's what I'll do for every lacy sock. Given the lace is only on the... Oh yeah, because they're... Okay, so my vanilla sock recipe is usually cast on 64, and this for the smallest size... 
I think is smaller than that, like a smaller number. So that's why I also went up because it was a smaller number than I usually cast on. So that's why they fit perfectly. The combination of lace and a different cast on number. <laughs> I can't talk y'all. I can't talk. I'm, I'm a little tired. <laughs> so yeah, this is in Tenderfoot and they're just perfect. I love it. I, these are definitely super sturdy socks, but I like them. I like them and they almost remind me of like hiking socks. Again, we don't hike anymore <laughs> since uh, we're not really in the mountains, but maybe one day we'll hike. But yeah, these are super cozy socks. I'm so excited to wear them now that I've officially shown them off. And yeah, I'm sure these will be on my feet all the time, all the time. And I love how the ribbing hugs my feet, like on the instep and on the leg. So yeah. There you have it, complete. Okay, so that was one pair of socks. I have another pair of socks as my next finished object. I think my last finished object. So I have shown you these before. These are my Hawkins socks by, or from, by. The pattern is by uh, Sarah from Denim and Rain. Yes, Denim and Rain. Um, she has a YouTube channel here. She has a few other patterns on Ravelry. And she makes really cute notions and stuff too. I think she just had a big um, release and they might all be sold out by now. But she had all these cute little mushroom, what do you call that? Notions, stitch markers and stuff. I don't know, she's just a very talented, she's a very talented creative maker. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but love these socks these are my hawkins socks these were a test knit and they turned out perfectly absolutely no modifications um and they fit my feet perfectly i also haven't worn these around a ton because i wanted to show them off while they were new pristine blocked you know uh but yeah and these are a worst away pattern so they knit up pretty gosh dang fast and yeah they were just really fun to make like i i do love a fast knit every now and then or all the time <laughs> It's fun to like have a satisfying fast project that are on the needles and then off the needles and that this definitely felt like that Because like in no time I had I think I knit this in a span of two weeks But like you could probably knit one of these in a day if you like really really tried um, But yeah, they're just this perfect ribbed Like almost retro tube sock I don't know. I love them. And I really like the colors I chose. This was all in my stash. I used Barocco Vintage in Worsted Weight. And I love them. They're so soft and squishy and warm. And I might throw them on right after this because it's pretty dang cold in this house. So yeah, I don't, like I said, no modifications. This was a test knit and they are officially out. So you can find them on Ravelry. I will link them below. And yeah, this will be a perfect gift knit. <laughs> so, uh, I recently posted a photo with all my fall socks. I post on Instagram with like these and my uh, September wood socks and my cozy autumn socks. And my grandma is savage, y'all. <laughs> she, I have knit her two pairs of socks before and I'm sure she expects some for Christmas and I will be knitting her some for Christmas. But uh, she is on Instagram quite actively, actually. <laughs> she follows me. And so I posted the picture of all my socks. And she said something along the lines of, those are so cute, but I don't see any, any that would fit my feet. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. I was like, oh my gosh, you're just pining for some socks. So she definitely wants them. I know she wants them. And I do have yarn to cast some on it. And I might cast on this pattern for her Christmas socks. So we'll see, that's something I maybe will cast on this weekend because I will show you, I have freed up some needles because something very exciting has happened. <laughs> um, and not in the way you might think. I made a decision and I'm proud of it. Anyways, I'll get to that later. Okay, so that is officially all my finished objects. A hat, two socks, two pairs of socks. Very excited. Kind of accessory heavy, but very practical and I wear them all the time. So, yeah. On to whips. This one, since we just got through talking about socks, I will pull out another sock. 
And y'all might be kind of surprised because you know, I'm a neutrals type of gal, like strictly neutrals for the most part. Um, like that pinky mauvey color is pretty much as crazy as I go, but I <laughs> am knitting this fun sock. So this is a plain old vanilla sock. I kind of sort of use summer, summerly knits. Um, I'm so basic sock pattern. Wow, there's a lot of all these ends. I usually weave in the ends right after I get done. Like I don't have a problem with weaving in ends at all. I love weaving in ends, but whenever I make, this is actually only my second time to make self striping socks. That's what I'm using is this Barocco socks, self striping yarn. Um, I really do want my second sock to match. <laughs> like it matters to me that it matches, which I guess if it didn't, I would just be like, oh well, okay. But like, I'm that person who really wants matching socks. So <laughs> I'm pretty um, picky with it. Like I intentionally leave the ends in so I can reference them in my second sock and be like, okay, I left this much of this color. You know, I started with this color, I ended with this color. I don't know, it just helps me to have my ends out and not weaved in so I can like match them, match them. And so far, I matched them pretty dang good. Um, so yeah, I finished this one. I cast on 64 stitches for the cuff. And this time I did something different. I casted them on using a US zero needle. And at first I was like, I'm gonna knit the whole sock in a US zero and see what happens. But then I got really antsy. I was like, oh, is it gonna be too small? Because my other socks, they fit me, but they are, the more I wash them, I think the more they grow. Um, and they, they don't grow like a ton, but they're definitely kind of like slouchy socks, which I like slouchy socks. I just wear them around the house mostly. But that was my thought. I was like, I'll knit the whole thing in a US zero. And I knit the cuff and then I was like, oh, <laughs> I don't know. Like I just, I wasn't brave enough to keep going. So then I swapped to the US one for the leg and everything else. But I do like how the cuff kind of uh, comes in like that since I use small needles. I kind of wish I would have knit it longer. I love a good long cuff, but yeah. So this is Barocco Socks, the main, main color. And then I had this in my stash, it's a mini skein. Let me see if I brought it, I did. It's a mini skein and I want to say it's from Pearls and Postulates. I got this in Georgetown, Texas at the Knitting Cup. Um, and they had like a whole wall of Texas Dyers, Texas Indie Dyers, and I'm pretty sure this is from Pearls and Postulates, but I, of course I did not keep the uh, label, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to say for sure, but it is this really pretty um, like teal green color, and I totally forgot I had this in my stash. I this It goes perfectly though with the yarn, like I really think sometimes your contrast color can define the way your sock looks like it really helps set the vibe and i wanted these to be christmasy so i'm not sure if they look christmasy <laughs> but when i picked out the skein i got this from my local yarn shop they have a ton of self-striping sock yarn in there and that was the first time i actually like really looked at it because i'm always looking for baby um stuff like baby yarn but i came in and i was like you know what? i'm just going for sock yarn because actually I'm doing the sock swap for La Mercerie and I was looking for my sweet partner um, sock yarn and yeah I'll talk about that later too but I found this because I've been wanting to knit some holiday socks and it reminded me of um oh, okay you're not gonna focus it reminded me of like Christmas lights festive Christmas lights and the Grinch so that's my, <laughs> that's why I think it's holiday. And, but I've been really enjoying knitting this up. Like it's some fun, crazy socks, y'all. I mean, I, this is not a color or a colorway I would usually go for, but I think the teal helps tie it in to like the, the holiday vibes I was kind of going for, but yeah. So yeah, just, I did a, what do you call this? Slip stitch, heel, regular gusset, yeah just a vanilla sock but I'm very excited for these because um, they'll be my second pair of self-striping 
socks, just plain old vanilla. And I've been really wanting some new ones. So I'm on my second one right now. And yeah, it's just been really fun. I knit this, I casted this on right after I finished my September Woods. I took those along with me on our very last trip back to our hometown and I finished those and then I immediately cast these on. I got the, this one done in like two days. I don't know what got into me and this one, I'm working on something else too. Whoops. I'm working on something else as well. So um, haven't gone as fast, but that's okay. We don't have to go fast all the time. We can knit things slowly and that's okay too. So yeah, that is that. Oh, and I was gonna say, I made a note of this because I can never remember. So I think I'm going to join the Keep It What's it called? Keep It Simple Holiday Cal, um, hosted by Shop Knitting Nelly. Uh, it's just the, cause I love the Falling Leaves Salt Cow, hosted by Earth Tones Girls. And actually y'all, I found out today that I won yarn from that knit along, which is crazy. Cause I never won anything. I, I just remembered that and I was shocked. My jaw dropped. Uh, so that was a super fun knit along because I got to see everyone super cool fall socks and it inspired me and y'all know this was the fall socks and now I'm a crazy sock knitter at least it feels that way so yeah it was just really fun really special knit along and I'm so excited for the yarn that I won but anyways <laughs> I won't talk too much about it but I want to join the keep it simple keep it simple holiday cal and it doesn't have to be a sock I think she's knitting socks um but I think the only rules are it runs from November 15th to the end of December and you just have to knit something in like self striping or designing or speckled yarn. So this is my first holiday sock and I'll be knitting more with the yarn I just won from uh, the Falling Leaves Sock Cow. So yeah, I'm excited about that. <laughs> I'm on a high because I literally never won anything and I just I thought that was crazy when I saw that pop up today. I was like, what? <laughs> And I kind of forgot there was uh, prizes involved too, so that was fun, but anyways, fun news. So yeah, maybe if you have an itch to cast on some holiday socks or a holiday something and have some, you know, stripe yarn or self-designing yarn, you can join too and we can just see all of our socks. So, yeah. Oh yeah, I will say I had to color manage. Oh, okay, yes. Wait a second. So this is the label, it's called Barocco Socks because people have asked me, I posted a story and some people asked me what colorway this was. It's Barocco Socks. And sadly, the color is like marked off. Like I can see three numbers, but I can't see the other one. So it's one, four, something, zero. Maybe one, four, zero, zero, one, four, three, zero, one, four, eight, zero, I don't know. But I actually tried to find it online because there was a um, break in the yarn and the way it was broken and put together again, like tied up with a different color, I could tell that it was not in the right order of the design and it really irked me. So I was trying to like match it completely because I was actually my first sock, like just started it. And so I was like, I need to color manage. I need to see like what the next repeat is. Because it doesn't tell you on the label either. It doesn't have, like, a picture. Um, so I tried and tried and tried to find it online. And I looked up every variation of that color number. And I could not find it. So I'm wondering if it's discontinued or if it's just old. I don't know. But I did a pretty good job color managing because I took a ton out. Well, actually, I had to color manage again. So this is two color manage um, takeouts. But I took a ton out and I just kind of guessed where I thought it might go and I was right I was right and so yeah I I was worried at first but anyways I've talked too much about these already they're just vanilla socks and they're turning out really fun so okay last whip so fun fact um Logan my husband I knitted him the halibut sweater a while ago <laughs> and I it had some fit issues and y'all probably know, y'all saw a ton if you've been hanging around from the very beginning. Oops, there went my yarn. One second. Oh my gosh, that was hard. I had to crawl under the bed to get this. Okay, so the halibut sweater. I did him the halibut sweater, had some fit issues. 
And so I just put it on hold. Well, I finished it, but I didn't want to go back and, um, like, make alterations until it was weather permitting, until he could actually wear it. Well, we were talking about the wedding we were going to this weekend, or last weekend, my uncle's wedding, and he mentioned that he might want to wear the halibut sweater there. And I was like, oh, this was the week before. I was like, oh gosh, okay, well, you know what? I saw where if you leave wool, like, overnight blocking, then it might just like bloom more and grow more and the last time i blocked it i really only blocked it for like 10 minutes and then blocked it so i set it in wool wash in warm water for an entire day and i blocked it and i could definitely tell it was bigger just on the blocking mat and so i blocked it we made the arms um wider we made it longer and it dried and it was it just looked really good and i was like wow this is awesome <laughs> and um, and it even got softer because whatever yarn I used was terribly itchy and he even picked it out and it's still, it's very wooly. Um, but it did get softer. So I was very impressed. Um, and he tried it on and what we realized is that yes, it got longer and yes, the arms fit better. But when he goes like this, it, um, pulls up like no matter how long it is because it is a super deep yolk super deep yolk and I got gauge everything like matches the schematics so and I kind of had a feeling that's why it fit like that to begin with after the fact that I finished it and I it just really was kind of disheartening because it's I think it's advertised as a unisex pattern which I know everyone's built differently men are built built differently women are built differently and it just feels kind of like a swancho almost the way it's designed the way the arms are decreased so fast yeah so he's he will still wear it but <laughs> he didn't want to wear it then because he was like if i you know if i dance it'll come up and anyways he's funny but so yeah he will wear it it got better but that was an experience that happened like last week and i was like okay i was knitting him his new Christmas sweater, correct? If you've been here, you know this. <laughs> it was, it was the um, fishbone sweater by Martin Story. And it was seamed and I hated knitting it. I hated knitting it because it was seamed and it was flat and I don't love knitting flat and it took forever. Like I was counting my progress on progress keepers and like every week it, I got this much bigger even though I worked on it forever. So after the halibut situation, I said, you know what? We have no idea how the seam sweater is gonna fit. It would be so hard to make alterations if it didn't fit. Like we're getting so close to having this child already and I know I will not have the brain power to seam something. So I told him, <laughs> I said, you know what? We're gonna just knit you the Montrealer instead because that's what I really wanted to knit him to begin with. Some of y'all mentioned it as well. Um, it is a worsted away pattern. It's a hoodie. It has a hood. It does have, it's in stripes, which we are omitting. No stripes. It has a pocket, which we are also omitting. No pocket. So it's a raglan. That's why I decided to knit him it instead, because I was like, you know what? If we do not want to knit you something for hours like we did last, like I did last time and it not fit correctly. So we're doing a raglan because I know how to alter that. And you can alter it while you go, you know? Like if he wants it to hit his underarms at a certain point, we could do it, um, you know, just at whatever point in the pattern as we fit it to his body. So <laughs> I made the decision and he was totally fine with it. He was like, yeah, and you know what? Knitting a raglan is easier for me. It goes much faster. And um, so it uses bigger needles. The same, I'm still using the same yarn. So yes, this is the Montrealer. This is how far we've gotten after like two days, y'all. It's knitting up so fast. I feel like I've gotten farther on this in two days than I had on his other version of the fishbone in, in a month, over a month. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I'm excited about. And I'm like excited to knit on it. I love knitting on it. I love raglans. It's bigger needle sizes. Um, or it's a bigger needle size, so it is going faster and I'm using the same yarn because honestly it reminds me of Wars to Wait and everything will be fine and if my gauge is a tiny bit smaller we can keep keep doing more raglans until we want it to fit where we want it to fit on him. 
So yes, I feel like I'm getting out of breath talking about this, but it just makes me very, very, very happy. So lesson to you, just knit whatever you want to knit. If you have a feeling about something, go with that feeling. Cause I don't know, you know, Logan doesn't really know. He doesn't know knitting. He does, he just sees how something looks and he likes it. But this gives the same effect and it's a totally different technique. So it's easier on me. And also I can totally knit on this after I have the baby. I mean, probably not as much as I'm knitting on it right now, but it's uh, it's a raglan. I know how to knit raglans. You just keep going and going and going. So I think this will be something I can easily pick up with like very little sleep. <laughs> Nothing like a whole new situation, you know? It'll be okay. So yeah, I'm happy, if you can't tell. Um, and it's just going good. So I'm doing the same yarn, Cascade Eco Merino, I think is what it's called, and the color Doe Skin, it's undyed. But yeah, we're getting there. I do think I'm going once, I think I'm halfway done with the raglan increases. And once I split for the body and the sleeves, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the hood because that seems like the most complicated part. So I'm gonna get all the complicated stuff out of the way before I have this baby, <laughs> hopefully. Um, and then I can just, you know, keep going on it after if, if I don't finish it before. So yeah, it was a provisional cast on, which I have done that once before and um, didn't love it. I didn't love taking the provisional cast off out, I think, or provisional cast on out. I think uh, one of my stitches got split and after, I don't it just made everything split and it was a nightmare. But I did it again. I liked the process of doing it. I just hope I can seamlessly take it out. But yeah. So whip number two. And those are my only whips, y'all. Those are my only whips. I do have some stuff I want to cast on. Uh, Maybe this weekend, like my... Sweet Anna socks, which she totally deserves and she's uh, definitely expecting. <laughs> and also, oh, I just want to get the house super cozy before our baby gets here because I've just had this, I don't know, I was feeling really anxious about it being Christmas just because time has felt like it's gone so fast, but something switched in me. And now I'm like super stoked for a cozy holiday at home with a new baby. I'm just imagining like twinkle lights and orange garlands and pine cone garlands. So yeah, this week I want, or this weekend, I want to spend some time DIYing some, you know, winter holiday decor and just making the house cozy. I want to knit. So I had a plan to knit our unborn child a mobile or mobile, however you say that word, for his crib, like little tiny mushrooms and make a mobile. But you know, time's running out. So <laughs> that's scrapped. But I do think I can make a few more mushrooms and do like a garland and just move it around the house wherever I want it to be moved and I can move it to his nursery if I want to. So yeah, I might make some little mushies this weekend, but I want to cast those on. And then, oh yes, um, I also want to cast on a hat because Sunny from Noodley Knits on Instagram is doing another hat drive. And she has an uncle that runs a cancer treatment center or hospital in South Korea and he wants beanies for his patients and I did it last year I think I think I participated I sent in a beanie or two last year and time is um <clears throat> or the deadline to send them in it's pretty soon um I'm not sure I'll link everything below because it is a really cool hat drive um it's for a really special cause too so yes I want to cast on a hat and send it in for Sunny's hat drive I think the deadline is December 1st. I'm not sure if I said that. But if you're interested, if you got some, you know, spare yarn lying around or some spare hats that you just don't wear anymore, that you knit, um, that's a great place to send them to. So, yes, I want to cast that on. I think that might be it. Okay, for acquisitions. We got some special ones. And I, last podcast, I don't know what my energy was, but I think I just accidentally, like, I skipped over my September wood socks, which I didn't even get much progress on those, so that's fine. But I also skipped over some acquisitions, so I, it is kind of acquisition heavy, but, um, that's because I totally forgot to show you some last time. So, the first one, though, I'm very excited about. I, okay, so, Chelsea from The Eclectic Sook, um, she's, She's watched my podcast before, I'm pretty sure, because she's commented on them. So I like kind of knew of her before and she's messaged me on Instagram. She's super sweet. But she wanted to send me um, some of her new yarn that she's dying. And of course, I was like, yes, I would love to try your new yarn. Um, I love yarn <laughs> and I love hand dyed yarn. So she's dyed scarves for quite a few years. I want to say eight. 
I should have written it down. Seven or eight years, she's dyed scarves. Um, and now, since she's a knitter, she's getting into dyeing yarn, which is so fun. She sent me this skein, which is so stinking pretty. And look at her label. Yes, okay, so this is the Eclectic Sook. It is, it's from the Eclectic Sook. Um, and it's naturally dyed with Brazil wood, so that's another thing. Right now, she's really into dyeing with natural dyes, and the reason it's so sweet is because she wants to get her kids more involved. And obviously with um, like more chemical based dyes, uh, you have to be more careful around kids and like what you touch and stuff. At least that's what I've heard. I've never used chemical dye myself. But so she is using um, natural dyes at the moment or she's experimenting with them because she wants her kids to like, you know, be able to help her if they're interested and stuff. So yeah, it's just so sweet. And she's a, she's a very sweet person. Um, just, you know, connecting through Instagram and stuff. She's so nice. I meet a lot of nice people and that's just so fun. But anyways, <laughs> so yes, um, she has a few skeins in her um, Etsy already. Just kind of like one-offs of whatever she chooses. But she's coming out, I think today actually, she's coming out with a collection that she's been dying up. And it looks so pretty y'all so hopefully by the time this is out they'll be out uh, they could be sold out by then i'll link her instagram and her uh etsy down below so you can go check her out if you're interested but yeah she has a ton of different bases i'm pretty sure this is did i even say did i even read off what this was <laughs> i don't know <laughs> this is sock yarn so it's 75 percent superwash merino wool and 25 percent nylon uh oh wow 439 yards that's a lot Wow. So yeah, uh, fingering weight. And I'm not sure what I want to cast on with this. Maybe y'all can give me some ideas. I could make some really special socks. She did let me know some care instructions. Apparently with this certain um, Brazil wood, it can change colors based on like acidity of things, which is kind of fun because it's kind of like mood uh, yarn. <laughs> Even though that's not intentional, like you want it to stay this color. Um, she just let me know that like, some detergents might change it which i use like clean cl clear and free you know i use the natural stuff anyways and i do take pretty good care of my socks so i think some special socks are an option i've really been interested in making a mini um shawl perhaps too like a little one yeah, if y'all have any suggestions, let me know, and I will take y'all along on the process. It feels so nice and so squishy, and I love this color. I can't tell if it's coming off on camera the way it is in person, but it's like this peachy pink and orange at the same time. So pretty. So stinking pretty. And y'all should just see the colors, because Chelsea loves colors, and I'm pretty sure she loves pink as well. And so she has a really pretty, I think it's called Strawberry Pistachio colorway coming out in her new collection that's like mint green and pink and all it looks, it looks so pretty so yes thank you so much chelsea and yeah eclectic sook i'll link everything down below you should definitely definitely go check her out because this is exciting for me at least it's exciting <laughs> okay so acquisitions um i bought this sock yarn at my local yarn store a few weeks ago and i forgot to show it to you <laughs> it is uh, I can't say this word. I don't know. J wall. I don't know. It's from Lang Yarn, and it is. What is the color? I don't know. Mm. Oh gosh. Color number nine o two period zero zero seven eight. I wish they would just give them color names, but so it's some self striping sock yarn, and it's pretty basic. It has some browns and. It has grays, and there's like a little cream, I don't know what that color is, yellowy cream. So yeah, I think I could pair this with a contrast cuff to really bring out maybe like a brown one to make it more neutral, or I could go, I was thinking even I could do a red cuff, or not just cuff, but red contrast colors for the cuff, uh, gusset, and toe, or not a gusset, heel and toe, I can't think y'all and make it kind of Christmassy, like a neutral Christmas. I don't know, so I got that and I'm excited about that and totally forgot to show it last time. 
And I also got from my local yarn shop these two mini skeins. And I'm pretty sure these are dyed by them. Um, dyed locally. And yeah, they're just mini sock skeins. I really like these colors and I'm kind of surprised I chose them because they're not my normal colors. I don't know, maybe I'm having a weird moment with purple recently because this is kind of purpley and I just bought the purple, I'm making the purple holiday socks. So maybe purple's coming into my life in some weird way, I don't know why, but I also like this just kind of more neutral, peachy, very muted, creamy color? I don't even know. So yeah, I might use these for like uh, contrast colors or maybe stripes if I collect enough of these and <laughs> they go together I could use them for stripes on the sock but yeah lots of sock yarn so I actually think that's all the acquisitions um I did order yarn that I think might be here today oh my gosh y'all no I ordered oh gosh I ordered actually quite a lot of yarn and I just want yarn but, oh wow I'm gonna have a lot of sock yarn to show y'all if this baby don't come soon um so I did order some yarn from the Kinetic Knitter. She did a collab with Sarah from Denim and Rain and they did an Into the Thicket collection. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. And I was pretty late to the party. I did not get any of, see I think Sarah did sell out of a lot of her notions because I definitely think I looked. But I'm always really late to like the pre-orders and stuff. I just, I don't know, I guess I just don't keep up in time and I'm, I'm always really late. But I'm pretty sure I snagged the Kinetic Knitter's last socks, sock set, sock set for this Into the Thicket collection. They collaborated with um, someone else too and someone who does like really pretty mushroom mugs. Y'all might have seen it, but so I think I got the last skein or one of the last skeins because I was super late to the party and I think that's coming or sock sets. So it's this really pretty, oh gosh, it's so pretty. It's like this green variegated color and I think it it looks red like a red contrast color so I was thinking those could be really pretty just like plain old vanilla socks or I could make the magic toastal socks with them because I think the green is it's it is variegated but it's not like at least it doesn't look super 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 variegated to where it would distract from the color work I don't know so I'm very excited about that and hopefully I'll have that to show you next time I could have waited to film tomorrow and show you tomorrow, but that's okay. <laughs> so yes, I have that coming and I ordered from Laughing Hens. Laughing Hens? I think they're in the UK, but they do ship to the US. And I ordered some self-surfing sock yarn from them. Um, I want to say I ordered some Drops Fable in like a chocolatey colorway. And then I also ordered some... Um, Oh gosh, Westshire York Spinners in the Robin colorway because I've been seeing everyone knit that recently and I ordered some. I was so stoked. And I got some more too. I don't even remember what else I got. But it's funny because I just won in that uh, knit along, I won some Westshire. I can Westshire yarn? Westshire? West York? Oh gosh, I don't know. I think it's West York Spinners yarn. I don't know but it's in like a gingerbread colorway so it's very Christmassy so yeah I have a ton of sock yarns that I'm gonna be ready to go and that's why I bought some the other day was because I really want projects cast on or maybe not cast it on but projects that I could cast on easily with my new baby and that won't take a ton of my brain power but are still fun so vanilla socks and self striping sock yarn is perfect for that so yeah I'm, I'm really excited maybe I should just maybe I'll you know, if this baby don't come within the next week or so, maybe I'll gather up all my sock yarn and do like a sock yarn video because that would be fun. Because I'm going to have a lot of fun new ones, even though I already have a ton of my stash. So, wow, we need to get to making more socks. Let me look through my notes to make sure I didn't miss anything because I feel like I had more to talk about. Okay, yes. So last time I mentioned that we had reached 3,000 on this community, which is crazy to me. And I do want to give a giveaway, but since I recently realized that this baby could literally come any day, I don't want to announce the giveaway and then leave y'all hanging if I like, you know, go into labor and I'm gone for a while. So I think I want to celebrate after baby comes. We'll do something fun. I'll think about it. And yeah, we'll do something fun. It, we have to do something fun. So 
yes, I think that'll come after I get back from having baby, just because we don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> Our lives are crazy. We're just kind of waiting around uh, for something to happen. So, yes. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, and I also said I would talk about some YouTubers and podcasts that I really enjoy watching. So I will. I wrote down a whole list, which I know this is not all of them. I follow so many YouTubers and podcasters for knitting because they're just so fun to watch. It's literally my morning routine. Like I wake up two hours before work and I watch podcasts and I knit. And that's when I get the most knitting done is in the morning before work. It's just a really fun thing to do. And if I don't do it, I feel so off. That's like my morning routine. So anyways, these are just a few podcasters and just YouTube channels in general that I love watching. And I'm sure some of these are probably on your list too, but I will link them all down below and I will link more that I think of because I'm sure I'm not saying all of them. Like I know I'm not saying all of them. So number one, you probably know this one already. Bethany from Well Love Knits. Love Bethany. She just had a little baby and she's actually, um, like coming back now like she's posted a few more videos after having her baby so that's fun and exciting to get to see her again and then amber from a lovely yarn podcast love that podcast i've been following that podcast for a really long time now that might have been one of the first ones i've ever watched and amber's so sweet and she's just so like calming and chill i just feel very calm whenever i watch her podcast which is great for me because i'm not a calm person i am <laughs> i am a uh, antsy crazy person so it's like nice to be calm on that same note we grow wild um martina i love her love her so much she does a lot of just really fun stuff like foraging even she i feel like she lives the life i want to live truly she just seems like she goes so slow in life and which is something i definitely want to do i want to slow down and yeah, she's been knitting lots of really fun stuff. She, she's been knitting lots of shawls, which is fun. I ha If you do not watch her already, you should go watch her. Because she has the most calming voice and the most calming presence. She just got new puppies. So I her puppies make an appearance on her videos too. It's just, oh my gosh, she's so nice. Or she seems so nice. I actually haven't uh, chatted with Martina or anything, but she seems really sweet and really nice. So... Okay, Casey from Young Folk Knits, the Arkansas queen. Y'all know I love her. Um, sorry, this lighting is being a little bit crazy. It's getting a little hot in here. I'm not sure why. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Um, okay, so Rebecca from Crayabaya Knitting Podcast. She just released a cargo. She's super talented. Knitting designer, too. Like, she's coming out with some really cool stuff. So, recommend her. Hannah G Knits. I've actually knit one of her patterns before. I knit the Ollie Bear Hat, I think is what it's called. And she is so fun. She does a lot of kids' patterns, and she seems super sweet as well. I was recently, uh, recently discovered Sugar Folk Handmade. She also lives a life I want to live. Uh, seems very, like, a co cottagey and eclectic. Um, I cannot remember where she lives exactly, but it just, maybe Tennessee or something? I don't know. She just, she has such a cool vibe. The Serenity Knitting Society. Y'all know I love Alex. She's so sweet. She's from Australia. She's really funny too and she has a really fun cat. So go follow her. Brooke Willow Knit is a good one. Denim and Rain. Um, that's Sarah that did the Hawkins Socks and the Into the Thicket collection. Go follow her as well. Lisa's Knit Club. I'm getting so winded. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ramble these off y'all and I, like I said I'll put them all, all in the link below. So Lisa's Knit Club. Finish knitting stories. Her voice also soothes me. She's so soothing to listen to. Anyways, and then Tiffany Lou from Typical Bliss. So yeah, I love following all those folks. Oh, also Jonathan Day. There's a, yeah, I'm gonna have to put more down below. But anyway, so maybe some of those are new to you and you can go check them out. And if you like watching podcasts like I do, super fun. So yes y'all i'm winded um what else oh yeah i mentioned i'm doing the law mercery sock swap and that has been such a fun experience let me know if y'all are doing that too um i got paired up with the sweetest partner i will not say her name because i haven't you know gotten permission to share any of that information but she is so sweet and we actually have a lot of things in common which is fun at least it seems like we've been pin palling over email and yeah i did that was an acquisition i did get her some yarn and stuff um 
but I didn't want to show it off or anything, you know, because I don't, I don't know if she watches this all the time. She did tell me that she watched uh, at least one episode <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Or I don't know, it just, it kind of embarrasses me when people are like, oh yeah, I watch you. Or maybe it shocks me. Maybe that's the better word is shock. Like, especially people that I know. They're like, oh yeah, I, I watch podcasts. And I'm like, oh, do you? <laughs> um, I don't know. I just feel a little self-conscious, but so yeah, that was pretty funny. So I'm not sure if she'll see this or not, but I didn't want to show off her yarn because I wanted it to be, you know, a fun surprise and yeah that has been such a fun experience um if you didn't do it this year if you can i highly suggest doing it next year because it's just really really fun or at least it has been for me so yeah getting to know a new knitting friend and a new sock knitting friend so so much fun so that's really all i've been up to these days yeah we're done <laughs> that's about it um like i said i'm not sure i'm gonna try to film I would like to film some videos in advance, uh, like different, maybe like my sock collection, my sock yarn collection. I still want to make a, things I would like to knit my child. Maybe not before he gets here, but even after he gets here, I want to make that video. There's a lot of fun videos. I think I've been watching lots of, uh, not lots, but some gift knitting videos, just like fun little accessories and stuff. I even like to watch that. If I'm not planning on gifting anyone anything, it's just fun ideas for stash busters too. So, yeah. Yeah, if y'all have anything y'all want to see, let me know. I'll try to do it. I don't know when this baby's coming. I'm literally on the date diet. Not diet, but I'm just eating dates, which don't love them. <laughs> and drinking raspberry tea. So we're like in the home stretch, y'all. We're there. We have no idea when this baby's coming. So, I don't know what my next video will be. Maybe next week. Or I'm, I might be gone with a child. I don't know. But hopefully y'all can check out this other podcast if you don't already watch them or listen to them. So, like I said, I'll add more. And yeah, thanks for sticking around for this long. Wow, it feels like a, a really long one. I'm surprised my camera has not yelled at me that it's dying. So yeah, thanks for sticking around. And I guess I'll see you next time.